In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how you can edit viral Instagram talking head videos completely from scratch in After Effects. I'm gonna be guiding you step by step in editing this short you see on the screen right now. To do this, we're gonna learn how to recreate all five of these animations. We're gonna be learning how to edit an engaging animation for the intro, three high-end animations for the body, and one final animation for the outro. And finally, at the end of this video, we're gonna be sound designing our entire short using our sound design workflow which we learned in this video over here. And here is a small snippet of what you'll be able to edit by the end of this video. When I'm on a sales call and the prospect just starts waffling, you have to actually learn how to use that waffle to close them. Download the project files and raw footage down below so that you can follow along. And without further ado, let's get straight into editing. Starting with our first animation here. First, I know I'm gonna have one big title animation for this entire section here. So I'll select all my text and delete them. Then I'm gonna extend this text all the way and write out the first part of my title, which is how to close. Then duplicate the text and write out the second part, which is wafflers, and resize the text until it is the same size as the one above. Lastly, I'll change the second word to a more slanted font. And now let's create our text style. First, I'm adding an ingredient ramp, setting the start here and the end here, and changing my start color to white and the end color to a gray to get this gradient. Then let's add in a subtle drop shadow and that's it for our main text. As for our special text, let's add in a gradient ramp, place the start here and the end here, then change the start to a bright red and the end to a more orange color. Let's once again add a drop shadow, but change the color of the drop shadow to a dark red. Looks great. Now let's add a little animation to the bottom text to spice it up. We'll move our playhead forwards and keyframe the position. Then I'm gonna go back and move the text down just a tiny bit. And in my graph editor, I'm gonna click F9 to bring this slide all the way here. Finally, we'll go to our second keyframe and keyframe our transparency at 100, then go to the beginning and make it zero. And this is what we're gonna end up with. This is a clean and simple text pop-up that just works. But our text is looking a little bit boring, so let's pop it up. First, we add in a light sweep effect, then we'll keyframe the position and move it to the right side, then move back and have it start on the left side. After our animation, we'll just move forward and just bring it back to the center because it looks really nice. And in our graph editor, let's smoothen out the whole animation and take a look at this. There's improvement, but we can do better. Let's bring in a deep glow effect and change the radius to 700 and the exposure to 0.1. Enable chromatic aberration and let's paste the same glow onto our other text. That looks awesome. One final touch we can add is we'll add an adjustment layer, then bring the layer down so that it's only above our A-roll, then add a Gaussian blur and a brightness and contrast effect and a deep glow. Set the brightness to minus 100 and blur to 30 and glow exposure to 0.01. Then bump up the chromatic aberration, select our circle mask, draw this circle out, and lastly, click on invert and feather out the mask. And we get this really clean and simple overlay. Great start. Now let's get to work on our graphic animations. First, we add in a shape layer. Using our rectangle mask, let's draw out a rectangle, go down to the corner radius and bump it up. Then change the stroke to a width of 2 and change the fill to a gray color. And let's start by animating our rectangle opening up. To do this, we go down to our size function, unlink it and add a keyframe for the current size. Then we move back and change the X value to 0 and smoothen it out in our graph editor. This is what we get. Then let's duplicate the same shape layer, select that rectangle and delete it. But now let's select our pen tool and draw out a straight line. Then let's go back into our scale and unlink it keyframe the current scale, move our playhead back and change the scale to zero. But this will only work if we set our anchor point to the center of our line and reposition it with the shape layer. Okay, this looks really good, but we need to add in one final touch. Let's add in our light sweep effect, same as before. Let's keyframe the end of the animation here and the beginning here. Now let's add in a deep glow and change the exposure to 0.01 and add a deep glow for the line animation as well with an exposure of 0.01. This looks awesome. Let's go ahead and add in our icons. I've downloaded the camera, chat, mic and user icon. So I'll import those, then selecting all of them, I'll scale them down and place them here and just scatter them out like so. Then select all of them, add in a tint effect and change the map black to a white color. Then I'll make sure the mic icon changes to a red color to make it look special. Amazing. Now I'm going to go ahead and select one of them and keyframe the current transparency, then move back and change it to zero. This will make our icon fade in and do the same thing to all of them. Finally, I'll add an adjustment layer and add a deep glow on top of it, change the exposure to 0.1, then pre-compose it with the icon animations. This is going to apply our deep glow to the icons without giving us any rough borders. This just looks amazing. And it's already enough for the intro, but there's one final touch I want to add. Let's first rotoscope me out of the frame by double clicking on my layer, 
clicking the roto brush tool and drawing me out of it. Then let's duplicate the layer and delete the roto brush from the bottom layer. Now we can start putting things in between me and the background. So let's start with the shape layer by drawing out a rectangle, then rounding it, changing the fill to gray and adding our light sweep effect. Now let's add in our user icon from before and simply place it right here. Add a gradient ramp and change the start to white and the end to green. Now let's also duplicate the adjustment layer with the glow and also pre-compose them again. And this all looks great, but let's animate them a little bit. Starting with the shape layer, let's keyframe the position, go back and move it down. In the graph editor, have it start quick and then slow down. Then keyframe the transparency, go back and drop it to zero and mimic the same exact position and transparency animation in the icon. This looks awesome. Now simply bring both of these under our rotoscope so that they appear behind me. And wow, that was a lot of animating, but we're almost done with the intro. Let's quickly go ahead and finish the rest of the text over here. It's gonna be pretty easy. So for this first section, I extend the words you will have to actually learn. Then simply go back and copy the effects from the base text style here and paste them on the first phrase. Go back and copy our red text style and paste it on the second phrase. But let's quickly change this gradient ramp to a blue gradient and this looks good. And as you can see, almost each batch of text has phrase 1 with the white text style and phrase 2 with the blue text style. So all I did here was apply the same techniques to the rest of our texts so that we get some really cool text effects on our captions. And with that being said, the intro is finally complete, so let's stop it off with some zoom ins and zoom outs. This will only take a second. I add in an adjustment layer and add in the transform effect. Let's go to where my icon pop-up happens and keyframe the scale in position. Then go back and start it zoomed out. Then we'll move forward to our text animations and just zoom back out, smoothen everything in the graph editor, and there you go you're officially done with the intro. Man, that was a very exhausting intro, but it's the most complex part of the entire video, so we kind of expect it. But let's go ahead and give this a watch. All right, looks awesome. And if you're about to lose hope, don't, because this was just the most difficult part of the whole video. From here on out, it becomes super easy. But if you're watching this as a video editor and you would love to edit videos like the one you're watching right now, I have a program for you that can teach you Premiere Pro, After Effects, and eight different editing styles in just two months. Whether you are a complete beginner or an intermediate in editing, these 300 plus courses will make you a high quality editor. With 50 plus courses that will help you master Premiere Pro, 50 plus courses that will teach you all of After Effects, 100 plus courses on short form editing styles like Ali Abda, Devin Jatho, Buy Maximize, and Houston Cold, and 100 plus courses on long form editing styles like Iman Gaji, Isaac, and my own editing style. We can turn you into a master video editor in just 60 days. This program, offered through Ultimate Editors, is designed to help you become one of the best editors by 2025 and start earning money with video editing. Just look at what all these guys have made with Ultimate Editors in just a few months. If you're ready to master Premiere Pro, After Effects, learn the eight high quality editing styles and even land your first video editing client, then join Ultimate Editors, the link is down below. I've left a completely free 6 minute video breaking down exactly how we use Ultimate Editors to achieve these results in the next 60 days. But in the case that this doesn't interest you, let's go back to editing. Now it's time to create our second animation here. Now this one's pretty easy. So let's first add in two shots of me working, then let's go ahead and delete all this text and start by making a background. We'll add in a solid, add a gradient ramp effect on it, just change the type to a radial ramp, place the start here, and change the start to a grayish blue color and the end to a darker blue. And let's select our B-roll and using our rectangle tool, let's draw out a rectangle right here. This will crop it like so. Now do the same thing to the second shot as well. And we're gonna add in some cool effects on the edges by adding in an adjustment layer and adding a deep glow to it. And a Gaussian blur with a blur of 40. Now select our rectangle mask again and draw one out like so. Then just invert it and add some feather. Let's tone down the exposure of the glow to 0.1 and we get this cool effect. And that's it for animation number two. See, that was easy. Let's now get into animation number three. This one's gonna be a bit more complex. First, we won't need any of our text, so let's just get rid of all of it. Now let's copy both texts from our intro here and just paste them right here. Change the first phrase to do not use and the second phrase to phone and resize it like so. Now let's create a 3D phone animation. First, let's head over to Sketchfab and download a 3D phone model in GLB4. Import this bad boy into After Effects and make it the comp size and make sure that our scene is in advanced 3D. Now you're gonna notice something. Our text just disappeared. That's because our advanced 3D renderer doesn't render out effects like blurs and glows. So let's pre-compose it and change it to an advanced render. All right, perfect. Let's animate this big guy. First, let's open up our orientation Add a keyframe and tilt it like so. Then let's move back and tilt it like so. This makes it so that it has to start like this and rotate to a different orientation. Then we smoothen out our graph editor like this. Looks good. Let's now animate it coming from the right side. So let's keyframe the position, move back and have it start on the right side of the screen. Then also smoothen out this animation. Now outside our pre-comp, I'll place the phone layer behind my red text 
and simply change the placement of the pre-comp like this. All right, now let's make this thing shatter. First, we add in an adjustment layer and simply add on the shatter effect. Change the view to rendered and change the pattern to glass. Finally, move our shatter over here where the text was and let's change the strength of force one to three and force two to three as well. And lastly, let's remove our gravity and that's all I wanna do with it. So I'll just select my adjustment layer and phone and both text layers and pre-compose them. One last thing I decided to do is change the viscosity to one, which just makes it super stiff. And this is what it looks like. Amazing, so we've just completed three of the five animations. Only two more animations left before we do sound design and complete it. So let's go ahead and work on our fourth animation. Now this one is only a tiny bit harder than our previous ones. But let's go ahead and dissect it. First, we'll remove all our text, then copy the red text style from before and paste it in and write out the word investments. Then we're gonna change the general color to blue. Then I'm gonna add a shape layer on top of it. And using my rectangle mask, I'll draw out this rectangle. I'll go into my rounded corners and increase it. And lastly, add a gray fill and drop the opacity. Then let's duplicate it and place them both like so. Now let's head over to flat icon and grab an icon of a camera tripod and an icon of a light bulb. I'll bring my tripod in and place it inside my square like this. Then add in a gradient ramp, place the start here and the end here and change the start color to blue and the end color to white. Now let's add in an adjustment layer, add a deep glow to it and pre-compose it with the icon. We'll now add in our light bulb, apply the same gradient ramp, layer on the same glow in the adjustment layer. I'll also add in a light sweep to both our icons and now let's get into our graphic animation here. I'll copy the background from before and paste it here. First, let's start with a shape layer and draw out a circle and change the fill to white. Then let's duplicate the shape layer, delete the circle and instead draw out a rectangle here and round off the corners. Duplicate the shape layer again and draw out a gray rectangle here duplicate the shape layer again and draw out another gray rectangle here and now let's merge them all together using animations let's select our circle and keyframe the current scale move back and decrease the scale to zero then smoothen it out in the graph editor to get this pop-up then select our rectangle unlink the scale keyframe its current size move back and change it to zero and smoothen it out as well we select our gray rectangle and keyframe the scale at zero then move forward and make it 71 and smoothen it out as well and lastly select our last rectangle keyframe the scale increasing as well and smooth it out and there we go now i want to create a camera and a light so i'll duplicate the shape layer once more and create a rectangle with a triangle like this and this will make for a camera icon then let's add a gradient ramp to it set the start here and the end here change the start color to a light blue and the end color to a dark blue and finally let's animate it coming in by keyframing the position moving back and bringing it up to the top of the screen and smoothing out the animation in the graph editor amazing now let's go and duplicate it but change the shape to a circle this time and place it down here then we're going to keyframe the position and move back and bring it back to the left side and smoothen it out this looks good let's finish it off with some line animations by adding in a shape layer and using our pen tool drawing out a line here adding a stroke and adding some dashes then let's make it draw out by adding in the trim paths function dropping the end value and the start value let's keyframe the start value move forward make it 100 and we're gonna get this line animation so let's duplicate it and place it here and duplicate it again and place it here lastly to create a field in between the lines i add a shape layer and draw out this triangle and turn the opacity down by a lot now i'll add a linear wipe and keyframe the start at 100 percent and move forward and drop it down to zero and finish it off with some feathering too great so i have a bunch of graphic animations and a bunch of stuff happening on a screen now let's make this look good let's add in a deep glow to the circle here change the the exposure to 0.1 and the chromatic aberration to 1% and let's paste it on this shape, this one, this one, the line, the camera, the circle, this line and this line as well. And with that being said, that completes our fourth animation. So let's go ahead and take a look at how everything looks. With our fourth animation complete, there is only one last animation to be finished and it's our fifth one. So for this last one, it's pretty straightforward. I won't waste your time on this, but I first go through all the text and reposition them and then add the white and blue textiles to them. And at this point here is where we get into our graphic animation at the end. So I'll cut my footage and duplicate it, then rotoscope the top layer so that my top layer is just me with no background. Then I'm gonna select the base layer and create a square mask on it. And finally, I'll increase the mask expansion at the beginning and keyframe it, then move forward and decrease it back again. Let's smoothen out these keyframes and great, this looks good. Now we add in a shape layer, draw out this rectangle and add a gray fill to it. Add a white stroke to the rectangle and finally let's add a text layer and write out the phrase be upfront. Then let's duplicate it and move the second duplicate to the top change the text to be honest, add some glow to both shapes. And finally, we're gonna add in an adjustment layer with the transform effect. Let's start the clip zoomed in, then let's move forward, zoom out a bit, 
and zoom back in. Smoothen everything out in the graph editor and this is it. It's finally complete. All five animations have been complete and the short's finally ready. But there is one final face. We've created all these amazing animations and it would be a shame to just leave them there. Let's bring all these animations to life using our three-step sound design workflow. Quick disclaimer, I'm gonna go really quick through this section here, but if you wanna learn all about this topic, I've made a 20-minute video covering everything about it. As you guys know, step one is sound designing the whooshes with movement. So if we take a look at our first section here, it starts off with a zoom out, then a zoom into the top right, and a final zoom out. Let's add a whoosh for the first zoom out here, then another whoosh for this zoom in here, then one final whoosh for this last zoom out here. And in this next animation, we only have one zoom in, so we'll add in a whoosh for it. Now in this section here, we start off with a zoom in, and then we have a zoom out. Then we have an out of frame zoom out and a final zoom in back here. So for our first animation, we're gonna add in a whoosh. And for our second zoom out, we'll add in a subtle whoosh. And for the out of frame zoom out, we're gonna have a very harsh whoosh. And one last harsh whoosh for the zoom back in. Amazing, now with our whooshes out of the way, we can move on to textured sound effects. Let's start by adding in a sound effect for the word wafflers popping up. I'll use this sci-fi sound effect here. Then let's add a sci-fi sound effect for this rectangle opening up. Then I'm gonna add a mechanical click for each icon and duplicate it three times. And as this call pops up, I'll add in a UI sound effect and that's it for this section. When I'm on a sales call and the prospect just starts waffling. Yeah. Now this part here is pretty simple. We just have cuts. So I'll use a camera shutter sound effect and overlay both cuts with it. Now moving on to this animation here, let's add in a sword swing for the light sweep animation we have. And we can see the shatter effect here looks like glass. So let's add in a glass shatter sound effect and that should do it. The first thing you need to be doing is not take- Now this is a big one here, but let's go through it. Let's start with a cash register sound effect for the word investment and a UI click for each of the two icons which pop up. Now for this motion graphics here, let's start with a UI click sound effect for the circle and one for the rectangle and one for the other rectangle inside of it. Then we're gonna add in a gear sound effect for this line here and duplicate it two more times for these two lines that come out here. Then a special sound effect for the camera icon and a special sound effect for the circle icon. And that's gonna do it for this animation. Then just invest in a camera and some basic lighting. Place your camera right there. Place your lighting right there. Let's just add in two UI animations right here where these two boxes pop in to make it look more like a UI. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you sound design a very heavily animated video. Let's add a soundtrack and finish it off. I decided to go with a classical soundtrack for the video, but you guys can let me know how it fits in the comments. And there you go. It's finally complete. All the animations, all the sound design, all the music, all the captions, everything. And it's finally time to enjoy it fully with the animations, the sound design, the music, and everything in between. So let's go ahead and give it a watch. When I'm on a sales call and the prospect just starts waffling, you have to actually learn how to use that waffle to close them. Now this is mainly speaking to those editors who are looking to close more clients on sales. The first thing you need to be doing is not taking these meetings on a phone. That's a big no-no. Instead, just invest in a camera and some basic lighting. Place your camera right there, place your lighting right there, and you'll be good to go. And when you're on the actual call, just speak with confidence, be upfront and honest. And this is exactly how I handle it. Guys, thank you so much for watching all the way till the end of the video. It really means the world to me. I just wanted to let you know that we are now posting every single Sunday or Saturday for some of you guys. So stay tuned for our next banger that we've got coming up for you. God bless all of you guys. Stay tuned for some amazing videos coming your way and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.